Today, I want to draw your attention to an adventure game that I played continuously as a kid, Fantastic Dizzy. Now, a little trivia for you. Fantastic Dizzy was known as the Fantastic Adventures of Dizzy outside of Europe, and has had multiple versions across the NES, Master System, and the Mega Drive. The version I originally played was the Master System version. The Master System version came on an oddly shaped cartridge, which is odd because the case claims the game is licensed by Sega. To this day, I haven't found out why this cartridge is shaped so differently to a regular Master System cartridge. This is the only game in my collection which won't work in the Master System adapter I have for my Mega Drive, and so must be played on the original console. There was a remake of the game for the Mega Drive with improved graphics and music, and this is the version I'll be reviewing. It'll be easier on your eyes and ears, and allows me a chance to play a fondly remembered game in a shiny new package. Dizzy himself is an egg, and is the hero of the Yoke Folk. The plot is relatively simple. The evil wizard Sax has kidnapped Dizzy's girlfriend Daisy, and cursed the remaining Yoke Folk. It's Dizzy's job to bring Daisy back and return his Yoke Folk friends to normal. As you can see, this adventure game has a very particular style to it. The gameplay is a mix between 2D platforming and Broken Sword styled puzzles. To solve every puzzle and progress through the game, you need an item. This item in turn rewards you with either another item, or access to a new area. For example, the Grand Dizzy is sick, and to cure him, you need to find a mushroom, a plant, and a medicine bottle. Throw all three into the pot at Grand Dizzy's home to create some medicine for him, and he will give you a golden egg which is then used to solve another puzzle. Other examples involve getting a prince to kiss a frog, bribing a guard with gold, and giving rum to a pirate. As well as solving the various puzzles, you'll be expected to collect stars. In the original NES version, there were only 100 stars in the entire game, but in the Master System and Mega Drive versions, there are 250, and you need to grab every single one if you're going to complete the game. These items, puzzles, and stars are spread across the Oak Folk Village and surrounding areas, including a beach, the sea, some mines, a city, a spooky forest, and Zack's castle itself. All of these areas have their own identity, with unique graphics and musics for each distinct area, all of which are connected. This game does a good job in proving that you can have locations filled with character that still link together and don't seem out of place. Now, time for some problems I have with the game. First of all, you can only carry three items at any one time. This means you're commonly running back and forth trying to remember where you left something. There are also points where you need three specific items, so if you're sure of just one item, You'll scream as you search the entire game trying to figure out where you left it. There are also ledges which can only be reached with the rope item, but if you leave the rope on a platform that you can't reach without using the rope again, you won't be able to complete the game. There are also sections where you'll have to complete a minigame to reach a specific item, but these minigames are usually a surprise, and if you're already carrying three items, you'll be forced to drop something and do the minigame again to recollect it later. Limiting your inventory to three items serves absolutely no purpose here, and only makes the game more frustrating to play at times. To use an item, you press B, but there's no way to cycle through the items you're carrying, so you'll automatically use the first item in your inventory. If it's the wrong item, you'll drop the item, and the next item you're holding comes to the front of the queue. So say you want to give someone their pet back, and you're holding, off the top of my head, dynamite, a key, and the pet. You'd have to press B to drop the dynamite, then again to pick it back up, then again to drop the key, then again to pick that key back up, then finally press B a fifth time to give them their beloved pet. Even the Master System version, where the developers only had two buttons to work with, rather than three, you can select which item you want to use, so there's no excuse for the Mega Drive version not to have the same function. Some items also blend in with the background, like the mushroom you need to cure Grandmaster Dizzy. On the Master System version, the items you can collect are in black and white, so they stand out against the coloured scenery. Another irritating piece of the game's design comes with collecting the SARS. Every time you collect a SAR, you get an on-screen notification showing you how many are left to find in the entire game. While it's nice to know how many more SARS I need to find, the notice doesn't need to take up HALF the screen. The Master System version simply has the number appear at the point you collected the star. The writing is much smaller, doesn't obscure any of the screen, and is perfectly noticeable. Being an old game, saving your progress is impossible, so you have to beat the whole game in one sitting. If you lose all your lives, it's game over, no continues, and extra lives are few and far between. Now the technology to save your game wasn't available back then, 
Sonic 3 was the first game I played to ever have such a feature. So it would be ignorant to knock the game for not having a save function. Isn't that right, game dude? A password system probably wouldn't have worked because the game isn't split into levels, and you can do some puzzles in whichever order you like, with no clear checkpoints. But they could have at least let the player have infinite continues or... something! Usually, this isn't a game where you'd be likely to die a lot, but my final complaint, aimed at the city, explains how you can. Once you get used to navigating the city, you'll realise you can't get anywhere without going through tunnels. All of these tunnels are filled with rats that dart around in seemingly random directions. They'll cause a fair amount of damage to you, and it seems as if the game rarely gives you a fair shot at avoiding them. I myself have suffered several unfair deaths to these rodents. All in all, the game was a charming and challenging adventure, with some great mini-games, characters, and locations. It was very imaginative and had a lot of potential. It was clearly trying, but the entire experience was let down by the gameplay flaws I've already mentioned. It also surprises me that, while the Mega Drive version is prettier to look at, the Master System version is better to play and succeeds in several areas where its big brother fails. If you've never played a Dizzy game, you'll be lost from the start and will more than likely give up before leaving the Oak Folk Village. I can only suggest this to people who are willing to be very patient and look up some pointers to get themselves started, or to those who already have a rough idea of what they're doing. Oh yeah, and um, Merry Christmas. Sat on a wall Humpty Dumpty had a great fall All the king's horses and all the king's men